Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. This is Richie, and in this video, I want to talk about Flight 2022. Last night, they dropped it at 8 p.m., all five episodes, and I want to give you guys my review and reaction of this series that we got from One Jets Drive Films. As you guys know, I was at the premiere on Wednesday night, and they screened episode number four, which you guys, I'm sure, already watched, which was the night of the first round of the NFL Draft, and now I got to see all the other episodes, and I am just absolutely blown away with how talented the production team really is at, at the New York Jets. You guys have no idea how much time and effort goes in behind the scenes into a series like this. 600 hours worth of film, countless interviews. There's just so much that goes into a, a series like this. So I really want to give a lot of credit to everybody over on One Jets Drive Films to put this together because us as Jets fans, we should be very thankful to have an organization that really cares enough to bring content like this to us as a fan base because we're so interested of what's going on behind the scenes. What does it look like behind the scene with the scouting department, with the pro scouts, the college scouts, the free agency process, the draft process, you know, these interviews with the national media. They just really hit a home run on all cylinders with Flight 2022. Last year was their first premiere of uh, the Flight series, which was Flight 2021, and they're just doing a phenomenal job. And I'm just so happy that we as a, as a fan base have a an organization that really cares enough to put this much time and effort into a series like Flight 2022. So in this video, I just want to give you guys my overall thoughts. I just finished all five episodes this morning, so I'm really excited to break down uh, this series on this channel. Before I hop into it, I just want to mention, thank you guys so much. I just hit 12,000 subscribers here in Jets Media. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys continuously show support here in Jets Media. I'm just a Jets fan like any of you guys. Just you know, have a huge passion for this franchise like you. And I love talking about this team. And it really does mean a lot that you guys continuously show so much support, hitting that like button, commenting your thoughts, and of course, hitting that subscribe button. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the countless support here on Jets Media. It really, really does mean so much to me because without you guys, I would not have been invited to that premiere on Wednesday night. It really does mean a lot that you guys continuously support me at Jets Media. So let's get right into the series, man. First of all, you know, the production team, absolutely spectacular what they did. But when you see the behind the scenes stuff of the senior bowl, of the process of, you know, Joe Douglas and Robert Sala, the cultures, the culture that they're really, um, you know, instilling into this organization, it's finally coming to fruition. And I think the one thing that some Jets fans say about One Jets Drive and Flight 2021 or Flight 2022 is it gets us so hyped up to the point where they do such a phenomenal job with the music and the the narration where it gets us it makes you feel like we're gonna win the super bowl i feel like that is the one thing that that i come away with every single time i watch this series every single season they do such a great job of hyping up this franchise but this time it feels different guys and the reason why i say that is if you guys watched flight 2021 last year you guys will notice the difference between that series and the series that that, that they just dropped this year in flight 2022 last year they told the story within the jets organization they 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 showed it with the jets perspective with guys within the building but this year if you guys noticed they had national media all over the place in this series adam schefter ian rapaport daniel jeremiah mike garofalo um you know peter schrager all those guys are part of the national media where they're not like jets fans they report on the nfl and they had nothing but glowing things to say about the new york jets so it's really cool to see you know them tell the story within the national perspective rather than you know the jets you know like eric allen and all the guys within the organization talking about this team instead they really wanted to make sure they go out there and get the national guys like the rabbit ports and all of them to really tell the story i feel like that was a really good idea from one jets drive uh, films to really get those guys out there um but then when you get into what joe douglas and robert Sala really are doing it, it's unbelievable like the we all knew that this offseason is going to be the biggest x factor of this franchise for the next couple of seasons because joe douglas made so many moves to acquire draft capital to get into the 2022 draft we all know what happened in the nfl draft but leading into this offseason there was so much hype we have so much cap space we have so many draft picks but we all knew none of this matters if we don't hit on the draft picks and i think we can all say with a straight face joe douglas and his staff robert sala and his staff did an absolutely insane job this offseason and we saw all the behind the scenes you know they went into free agency with the plan 
And they came out, came away with guys with culture, guys that love the game of football, guys that fit the identity of the Joe Douglas and Robert Sala culture, like DJ Reed, Lincoln Tomlinson, Jordan Whitehead, CJ Uzama, Tyler Conklin, you know, Jacob Martin, Solomon Thomas. All these guys are just pieces to the puzzle that have veteran Super Bowl winning experiences. These guys have, you know, pedigrees where, you know, DJ Reed was with the 49ers and then he was with the Seahawks. Those two teams are really good football teams and they're consistently good winners. Jordan White head went to the Super Bowl and won a Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Lincoln Tomlinson was in the Super Bowl with the 49ers. CJ Uzama was in the Super Bowl with the Bengals last year. You know, all these guys that we brought in have really good experiences of how, you know, they, they know what it takes to, to turn the organization around and win some football games. So I feel like that was a big time, you know, focus for the New York Jets when it comes to free agency and they allocated the cap space beautifully. Instead of using all the cap on one or two guys to win the headline, they spread it out. They got two big time tight ends. They got the best guard in the market in Lincoln Tomlinson. They got such an underrated corner in DJ Reed. They get a really good safety in Jordan Whitehead. You know, they get an edge rusher for depth purposes in Jacob Martin. They get another big time defensive lineman in Solomon Thomas. You know, there's just so many guys that they really brought in. And of course, the most important free agent signing, in my opinion, was bringing back Braxton Berrios. And they highlighted that in flight 2022, which I'm really happy about because going into this offseason, that was a really interesting move to see if Joe Douglas and his staff was going to prioritize making sure the continuity factor is real by bringing in burials. And that's exactly what they did. And, and they really highlighted that in flight 2022 of how important you know, the pro uh, scouts for the New York Jets, you saw the behind the scenes of them saying how important Berrios is to this organization, how he has a rapport with Zach Wilson. They do not want to, you know, let him walk. And then Zach needs to find another player to really get that chemistry. And I feel like Braxton Berrios is going to have his best season of his career this season for the New York Jets. And then you pivot to the draft process. I mean, last year's draft class in 2021, we all thought was phenomenal, which it was, you know, Zach Wilson, he's the biggest X factor of this entire team, getting him at number two, the Jets rel relentless effort to trade up for a Elijah Barrett Tucker, them getting Elijah Moore in the second round, Michael Carter, you know, all four of those guys are the offensive core of this team. And then the next six picks last year, are all defensive players and guys in the back end of this uh, draft last year that I think is going to be really good impact players this season, Michael Carter, the second, Jason Pinnock transitioning to become a safety, Eccles being a, a depth piece at the cornerback spot, Jonathan Marshall potentially getting some burn. And then the two linebackers, Hamza Nazareth and Jamie and Sherwood, them going into your number two. So the last year's draft class was like the, the first time of the instilled foundation for the Robert Sala and Joe Douglas New York Jets. And then we go into this draft class with all the cap space and all the capital that we have. And what it tells me is that everything went our way. If you guys saw that episode, episode number four of the experience in the draft room, on Thursday night, April 28th of the first round of the NFL draft, they all wanted Sauce Gardner. And they were so happy when they saw that the Houston Texans took Derek Stingley because they knew that Sauce was their guy immediately. They were all relieved. And then you see Joe Douglas potentially trying to trade up in the draft for Garrett Wilson. And they were really freaking out. Like when the Seattle Seahawks were on the clock at number nine, they didn't know what they were going to go. And Joe Douglas like, they're going to take Cross. They're going to take Cross. And they did take up Charles Cross. And you saw a big jubilation within the war room that they just got their guy in Garrett Wilson. They draft their receiver. And then the best part of this entire series, in my opinion, was this moment right here when when Woody Johnson comes up to Joe Douglas and Douglas tells the owner, listen, Jermaine Johnson is like a top eight player on our board and he's still available. Like, can we go up and get him? And Woody Johnson's like, I would do it. Let's do it. Let's go ahead. When he, when, when Woody Johnson gave Joe Douglas that okay, you see Joe Douglas working the phones. He's calling people denied, calling people denied. Relentless effort from Joe Douglas to get his guy. And J Jermaine Johnson, when they visited the New York Jets, he said to Joe Douglas, come and get me, trade up for me. And that's exactly what Joe Douglas did. That tells you the type of culture and the type of attitude that this New York Jets organization has and their effort to really try to uh, turn this organization around. And they go out and get their guy in Jermaine. And then, of course, you see the... Um, at the last episode of episode five, them getting Brees Hall. They want to get playmakers for Zach Wilson. They end up getting Jeremy Ruckert later in the draft and then Max Mitchell and Clemens. And it really feels like that things are trending in the right direction because I think us as a fan base knew how important this offseason was heading into it. And then now we're the, when we are on the other side of the offseason, where it's in the past now where we can evaluate it, they absolutely hit a home run. You see all the NFL media praising the New York Jets of what they did in the offseason. And now we get to see the behind the scenes looks and it really re reaffirms of what they were able to accomplish. It's kind of mind blowing that they were able to get 
three players in the top uh, in their top eight on their board in sauce garner garrett wilson and jermaine johnson that's just ridiculous that that happened the new york jets are extremely happy about what they were able to accomplish in the offseason and this is the type of offseason that can really propel this organization to be a sustainable winner now we can't expect these rookies to go out there this season and be all pros right away but i think that we can all say with a straight face that if they develop properly they all have potential to be stars those four players in particular in sauce Garrett Wilson, Jermaine, and Brees Hall, those four players, in my opinion, are starters for this New York Jets team and have star potential written all over them. So I just want to make a video of my thoughts of Flight 2022. As you guys can see, I'm on cloud nine. The New York Jets did a phenomenal job. Shout out to everybody in the One Jets, uh, One Jets Drive Films uh, room. They did such a phenomenal job. You guys have no idea how much time it, it takes to do that. I don't even have an idea either, but I just know as a I went to college and I studied media production, so I understand the video production side of things, and they put so much sweat and tears into this, and I'm so happy to be a Jets fan. You guys should feel happy to be a Jets fan as well, because things are genuinely trending in the right direction. Robert Sala knows what he's doing. Joe Douglas is instilling a culture, and bright things are ahead for the New York Jets. Leave a comment down below your thoughts of Flight 2022. This is my recap and my reaction to the entire series. I have a lot to say. Obviously, this is a long video of me just talking about a series, but man, was that awesome! Awesome. Thank you to the New York Jets for inviting me to the premiere on Wednesday night. It really does mean a lot to me that you recognize the work that I put in to really try to uh, connect with the fan base, connect with everybody around the world that supports this awesome New York Jets franchise. And this season is going to be special, guys. And I'm going to be here with you throughout the entire way. Let, make sure you guys like the video if you guys enjoy. Don't forget to comment down below your thoughts of the series. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Let's go Jets. Peace out.